Apocalypse Inc. Productions presents 5-Minute Stories, written and read by Jennifer Brozek. 5-Minute Stories, a little bit of story to last you all day. This story is called Responsible. Okay, miss. The officer paused to look at the notepad in his hand. Roman. You've been read your rights. Do you understand them? The young woman at the table with her wrists and handcuffs gazed at him with resignation. Miss. He paused again to look at his notebook. Call me Cassie. Everyone does. All right. You can call me Brad or Officer Dean, whichever you're more comfortable with. Do you understand your rights? Do you know why you're here? Cassie nodded. Yes. Can you tell us why you were illegally giving flu shots to people? What's today's date and time? He frowned at the question. It was odd. He wondered if she was one of the crazy ones. They needed care. July 21st, 11.40 in the morning. Already? Time slips by so fast. It doesn't matter anymore, I guess. It's already started. Cassie sat up, looking older than her reported twenty-two years. You want to know? She was interrupted by Officer Dean's partner, Jordan Malloy, coming into the room. He didn't look at her. Instead, he handed Brad an open folder and pointed at something at the top of the page. The officer's frown deepened. Miss? Cassie. Cassie? This report shows that you weren't giving people flu shots. It's something the lab can't immediately identify. Yes, I know. It was what I was about to tell you. Her tone was one of infinite patience, like she'd done this before and knew what was going to happen. The two officers looked at each other. Brad nodded. All right, tell me about it. The two men waited, focused on her, looking for signs of violence. It doesn't matter anymore. It's here now. It started. I was giving out vaccines against what's about to happen. Has happened. The end times are here. Armageddon. The apocalypse. Whatever you want to call it. I wanted to save some people from what was coming. I didn't want to be the only one left. It'll move like wildfire through tall grass in summer. People will die in the streets with sores exploding all over their bodies. It's already moving. Seattle, San Francisco, D.C., New York, Paris, Geneva, St. Petersburg, Sydney, all over the world. People will die and no one will know how to stop it. She gazed at the wall, seeing the horror in her mind. Do you know how hard it is to choose who will live and who will die? To decide against your favorite nephew because he has a hereditary disease that requires constant medication and should not, cannot, be passed on to future generations? Do you know how difficult it is to choose strangers out of a crowd to become the saviors of mankind? You don't. But maybe you will. The two men looked at each other again, caught up in the reality of this woman's words. Finally, Brad shook his head. I can't believe this, Cassie. I can't. She shrugged. Then don't. Send your partner out to check on the state of the world. If you don't trust me, trust him. Brad motioned Jordan towards the door, then engaged in a silent staring contest with his prisoner. He was chilled to the bone to see no fear, no doubt, no hesitation on her face. Just wary resignation. She believed every single word she said. She had to be insane. She had to be. The alternative was too awful to contemplate. Jordan returned, his face pale. All the lights are lit up. People are dying everywhere. He whirled on the woman. What did you do? Brad put a hand on the man's shoulder, his eyes on Cassie. Everywhere as in our town or everywhere as in the world? It's all over the news. Everywhere. Everywhere. Why didn't you tell someone? Why didn't you warn us? Dean's questions were directed at Cassie. Why didn't you do something? No one believes the apocalyptic vision. 
Most times, they blamed the calamity on the prophet. Her eyes flicked from Brad to Jordan and back again. Also, I was doing something. I was saving some. But you two put a stop to it. I'm no longer responsible. You two are. She bared her teeth in the parody of a smile. You confiscated the vaccine. There were ten doses left. No more than nine now. Probably less. They're yours. Yours to do with as you please. You get to choose who lives and who dies. You both are responsible for what little is left. She stopped then, letting the sentence hang between them like a rattlesnake. It had bitten her more times than she could count, and finally, it was someone else's turn. Apocalypse Inc. Productions hopes you have enjoyed this story by Jennifer Brozek. If you would like to read it, or others like it, it is available in 5-Minute Stories, Volume 5, by Jennifer Brozek on Amazon.com.